Hi, it's Ali from Merlin Mosaic here. Over the years, I've had a lot of questions about how best to work with the Lidocol Crystal Starlike Evo or Translucent Grout. So today, I thought I'd show you how I've used it in this Koi Drop piece. So, without further ado, let's go. I've already measured out the um, quantity that I've got that I need. Um, I've got a couple of things to do. And so what I've chosen to do is mix up around the 200 grams. Now I'm just... So the first thing I need to say is your pieces need to be clean and dry. So this is an old piece I did some years ago. I didn't know about translucent grout at the time, but I've cleaned it and dried it. Um, and I've also got the koi fish. So that's what I'm going to do first. Um, I have a bucket of water handy and it's clean. And I have a scourer sponge and another one in reserve. So I'm just gonna get to it. So I just plonk it on any old towel. I tend to like to use my hands. just me I do it with any grout um, even though these are great um, and I do do like them I just maybe it's just harking back to mud pies oh, I don't know now it is very important to make sure that your gaps are filled because if you notice once you've started cleaning, that there's some gaps. You have to wait then until the piece cures before you go back and fill those because it has to be dry before you add more grout in. Otherwise, um, you can introduce a fault line. Now, you can add more grout before you start cleaning. but um, So I do recommend mixing less rather than more. Now, I've mixed a fair bit because I have a large tub and I know it's getting to the end of its life. So I feel that I can be a little bit more generous. But with normally, I just suggest to people that they err on the side of caution because it's not the cheapest product and I'm quite aware of that. Now, as you know, this piece has two sides. So I'm not going to grout the first, the second side straight away. I'll probably, I'll see how I go. I might. But I'm just trying to make sure that I have filled every little thing. And I think that looks pretty good. Double check, make sure that I've got everything in the light. And his little eyes. And his fins. So now I'm moving on to my flutterby or butterfly, flutterby butterfly, which I did some years ago. Um, it's been partially grouted with um, just an ordinary black cementitious and I'm not masking that off. I want to actually go over it with the translucent because it will form a good sealant for the grout. Um, and this morning I did give it a good scrub and then I let it dry before I do this. And as I said before, I'm just going, sh making sure I've filled all the holes, all the bits. Now, it's a pleasant day here in Canberra today, this Easter weekend. It's quite warm, but not too bad. I've got the garage door open as well. So, you know, there's a bit of warmth floating about. And... So that's fine. I'll just put that up there. And I've got quite a while to work with this stuff. I've found through um, personal experience that 
it actually doesn't go off too fast. So I'll just put that one aside, come back to this one. Now I've got my little scour sponge, and as you can see, it's actually been used before. I do use them a couple of times. Now, so I do actually get them, they're quite wet. There's still water coming out of that one, as you can see, right? So then I just very lightly, very lightly, um, in a circular motion, go over the work. And as you can see, it turns white. That's what it's meant to do. And when I've done that, I'll just go back to the other one, do the same. This is going to be interesting to clean up because there's so much textured glass in it. But again, I'm not too concerned. It tends to come out, I find, pretty easy. Um, Having said that, I'll probably eat my words in a while because this is a granitized one and they're pretty dreadful. And I'm just taking the muck out with my finger because I don't want a huge amount there. There we go. So now I have my sponge side and I'm going to wring that out. quite hard and again in a circular motion just gently no pressure no pressure wipe this off and rinse frequently and then I just I'm just sort of dabbing that following the lines of the glass and in a minute I'll take my gloves off and feel it if it's sticky but not just at the moment I'll do the other one first and so I'll put that one aside and bring this one back over this will be fun Now I'm wiping it quite heavily out of the black because I do want it to be a just a small sort of a skim coat. And I did this piece a long time ago and maybe the grout lines were, um, they're a little bit wider than I would do these days. Um, but I think still it'll be okay. And, and as you can see, people stress about it coming off out of um, textured glass I'm not having much problem and I never usually do now the last bit is this is where I take my gloves off to do this because I need to feel the um, work and if it's sticky I need to go in and you know what None of that sticky. In fact, it's all quite squeaky. Squeaky clean, as they say. So that gets a very quick, very light polish. And I'll just again check it with my hand. There's no stickiness on there anywhere. Nowhere, no how. So that piece is done on that side. Yeah. Let's see what this one's going to be like. This is going to be fun. But even though I've got a lot of textured glass, I don't have a lot of issues in the textured glass. It's more the, the deep grout lines that I've left over the top of the black, which will need a bit of cleaning up. I mean, this was also grouted with much wider grout lines than, um, so so this grout in this case will probably end up looking um, a bit cloudy. And you can see that, yeah, 
I've left quite a bit of depth in the black there, which, you know, I probably should have regrouted before I did this, but I didn't. That's okay. Thanks for watching. If you liked, don't forget to hit the like button down below. If you want to hear more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you next time.